Hi everyone, it's Michael, and it is finally time to begin the urea versus urea-free orchid fertilizer experiment. Now, as I mentioned in my Understanding Orchid Fertilizer video, there are so many conflicting perspectives on this topic. A lot of seasoned orchid growers will tell you to never use a urea-based source of nitrogen in your orchid fertilizer for fear that it could be detrimental to the health of the plant. But a lot of other seasoned orchid growers will tell you that it doesn't really matter because even though the orchid is epiphytic, it is capable of somehow breaking down that urea into a usable form of nitrogen. So what I'm hoping to accomplish with this experiment is to gain a real life understanding of how that works and what that looks like. So as I mentioned, I am going to begin watering my entire orchid collection with the urea free orchid fertilizer formula. And I'm going to use that at the same concentration that I've been using the balanced formula, which does contain urea. So that's going to be a half teaspoon of fertilizer per every gallon of distilled water. Now that being said, I'm just going to observe these plants and see how my existing collection fares. I'm going to be able to see if they have bolstered or more intense growth or if they somehow seem to lose momentum. I'm going to be watching all of that over the course of the next few months. But even so, I don't feel like that's sufficient enough experimentation for me to gain the proper insight that I need to make an informed decision. So what I did is I went out and bought two discount Phalaenopsis orchids from my local garden center. Now, I would encourage you to do this if you're ever experimenting with anything. I love picking up discount orchids because I don't have that emotional connection to them. I haven't been raising them for years. So if I lose one, sure, I'll be sad, but I'm not gonna be devastated like I would be if I lost one of my Bulbophyllums, for example. So these were $4 each and they're a great starting point. The reason I selected them is because they are extremely similar in their general disposition. They are both sitting in a soppy mess of sphagnum moss. They both have some promising new lush and green root growth, which you can see right here at the top. You can even see one over here in the corner. But they also have their fair share of root rot going on. I don't know if you can see that very clearly. Um, and the other is very, very similar to that. So you can see there's some lush green growth right at the top. And then if I flip it to the other side, you can see that there's like, a, there's a fair amount of root rot. So that being said, these two orchids are relatively similar in their starting point. Now, in an ideal world, I would be using almost identical orchids. I would perhaps pick up seedlings from a sister batch. I would be able to experiment on orchids that were predominantly identical, but due to budgetary restrictions, this is what I've got. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these repotted and then I will start fertilizing this guy with the urea-based nitrogen formula. And then I'll feed this guy, this one here, with the urea-free version. And I'm gonna kind of cross-reference their growth and development, their adaptation to semi-hydroponics. And um, I'm just gonna kind of report to you guys all along the way. You'll notice that I am doing something very uncommon, which is I'm potting into plastic cups, which you know that I absolutely detest. But I'm doing it because these aren't actually gonna be a part of my standard collection. These are experimental orchids and, you know, assuming they do really fabulously, I will go ahead and give them as a gift to somebody when they're in spike and looking lovely. But for right now, their primary function is to help me assess the impact that urea has on orchid growth. So let me get these two repotted and we'll come back down and talk about it. As I move forward with the process of repotting both of these orchids into semi-hydroponics, I thought it was important to press pause and take note of the root system. If you compare the two, you'll notice that they both have equally viable root systems. They are both equipped to receive nutrient solution, which means that their general starting point is approximately the same. So that's really good news as we go into this experiment. Now, of course, the transition to semi-hydroponics is going to cause some attrition of the root system, but their starting point is roughly the same. And I just think that's an important call out to make as we move into this experiment. I've gotten both of the orchids repotted into a semi-hydroponic growth system, and they have both received a thorough flush of nutrient solution containing their respective fertilizer. I'm distinguishing one from the other with the use of stickers. UF stands for urea free and a simple U will signify urea. Now the timeline on the completion of this experiment is a bit unclear because I'm not sure how long it's going to take for me to collect enough information to generate an informed opinion about urea's impact on an orchid's growth system. I can however tell you how I plan to move forward. As I mentioned, I'm not going to give these orchids a number. They are not a part of my formal orchid collection. They will, however, appear in all of my monthly orchid updates until I feel like I've gained enough information to create my conclusion video where I make my final statement about what I think it actually does to orchids. Now, I received a really great suggestion from one of my uh, subscribers, Larry Jones, who is always just a wealth of knowledge and 
always offers the most constructive feedback, and he suggested that I invest in one of the aquarium ammonia testing kits. And the thought process here is that if there is enough bacteria to convert urea to a usable form of nitrate for the orchid, it'll have to stop at ammonia somewhere because it'll move from urea to ammonia to nitrates. That's the general progression, assuming it is being broken down into a usable form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also going to test the uh, fertilizer solution before it goes into the grow system. And then I'm also going to test the runoff that comes off of the grow system like so. And if I find that there is more ammonia coming out of the grow system after it has been interacting with the orchid than there was before I put it into the grow system, that's gonna tell me a lot. I'm also gonna do some more research and see if there's any other scientific methods or measurements that I can take of the water that will give me some more insight. So that's generally the system of how I'm going to assess urea's impact on these orchids. So as always, thank you guys so much for choosing to spend your time with me. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, or suggestions about how I can effectively measure this process, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share if you find useful, and have a beautiful rest of your night.